So before I get started, uh, just a quick raise of hands. How many people here might actually use Twitter? A couple, cool, awesome. Um, we have work to do to get all of you, but uh, before that happens, before we get started, uh, if you could tweet your favorite song to at Archoy. Archoy, that's me, um, and it's part of the demo. Um, as I'm talking rambling, feel free to just think, I don't want to listen to this guy. I'll just tweet a song title to at Archoy. And please keep it clean, please keep it classy. Um, so what I'm here to talk about is connecting to the pulse of the planet. Um, from the Twitter perspective, or, or before I get started actually, a little bit about myself. Uh, this is me, my sister, and my two kids. Um, I graduated from UC Berkeley Computer Science in 2000. Uh, great computer science program. Um, I was an early engineer at Salesforce.com. I built the APIs. That was a phenomenal experience. Was there for a great eight years and really got a chance to learn how to build scalable software systems. Um, at some point or another, I decided that it was time to go back to school. I think that was 12 years later, or 10 years later, so I went back to business school. Uh, it was an interesting compliment. I'm happy to talk to anyone who is considering business school or seeing how business and technology kind of work together. Um, I met my co-founder for a startup called StyleUp, uh, uh, and we got into Y Combinator. That was a great experience to be near Paul Graham, uh, Gary Tan, and all these luminaries that you hear about, and they really are as smart as you hear, so that was an amazing experience. And lastly, uh, I'm now a developer advocate at Twitter. Um, of the many things that I've done that I've enjoyed, this is one of my favorite jobs I've ever had. A ton of fun. I get to speak. I get to show what people are doing with cool, uh, cool things on Twitter. Hopefully, I'll share some things with you. Um, and just as a plug, we are hiring. So if you're interested, want to work in the city, uh, feel free to meet me afterwards. So when I, when I go out uh, on the occasions that I'm actually fortunate to go out and talk to people, I normally hear three questions. Um, number one is, why should I build into Twitter? You know, I love talking to engineers, and, and I think that there's so many things that you can do on social media. Uh, people want to know why Twitter, and you know, how can it help? Um, the next thing is, how do I build into Twitter? Well, great, now that maybe I've given a couple of examples, how would I do that? Uh, and I want to show some examples of that. Uh, so that's the third point, of just showing other great examples that we've built, as well as that have been out in the wild, and hopefully those will inspire you to pick up some of our tools, some of our open source libraries on GitHub, uh, and start poking around. So the first question of why build into Twitter, um, and if you are having the conversation, hashtag you know, open webcamp six. Uh, Twitter, first off, enables global distribution. And that can mean one of two things. If you are an app developer or if you are uh, a web developer and you've built this awesome thing, you can use Twitter to get distribution, to get people to see it. Um, and if you're a publisher, you can use Twitter to, to um, get your content distributed, you know, viral content, great content gets shared widely, uh, and that's what people love, and that's what they retweet, and that's what they, they, they want to talk about. So, you know, different people have different examples of what great content is. Just three examples right here. Uh, a lot of people love Twitter for sports, and so the NFL shares live video clips as they happen, or right after they happen, uh, and they get a ton of distribution. People love watching the video clip and then having the conversation about it on Twitter. Um, people love selfies. Selfies are a thing now. And uh, here's a selfie with the Pope. Um, and so it's not just these brands that are going out there and sending their message. It's individuals having their experiences, their voice distributed on our platform. And uh, news distribution. Uh, this was a photo from um, the, the unfortunate crash um, at SFO. Uh, it was actually taken by a man who was on the flight, got out, took a picture. And then soon after, this is not just the conversation, this is actually all the places where that image and that tweet uh, were syndicated. So you'll see that uh, you know, some of the, the major news sources actually had this as the key piece, the, the keynote of the story. Add to that, that, um, that image, that story got then distributed on television, got distributed on lots of different channels. Uh, and so this event was breaking on Twitter and spread throughout the world. Um, one interesting note that, that I like to use for this particular example is, um, have, have any of you used the social media application Path? A few of you? So Twitter, Facebook, larger groups, Path, their, their premise is that it's a smaller social network, but you can share to the larger social networks. This, guy, this man, David, was actually using Path at that time, and he clicked on the photo, wrote his little message, um, sent it out to his social network, and shared it on Twitter. And so through this integration, 
this application was able to get a ton of distribution and a ton of downloads um, because it got visibility and because it was a great story being told. So from where we stand on the developer advocacy, you know, promoting the APIs, we want people to bring great content into Twitter and to do what we can to help it get great distribution to lots of people because they're amazing stories and amazing applications that people want to see and want to hear about. Uh, other reasons that, that people like integrating into Twitter, uh, we're growing in terms of our user base. Uh, at this point, this might be a little outdated, but 230 million active users, 500, I think 550 uh, tweets on a daily basis, and 77% uh, of the users are actually outside of the United States. And so we get a ton of distribution globally, and we're super excited about being able to have the conversation, um, not just be local, not just be where you are, but just around the world. The things that you interest, or you're interested in, the things that you follow, um, can be anywhere, and we're pretty happy about that. That leads into how we see as developers, but just as people who, who, people who love and work at Twitter. It's, Twitter is the shortest distance between your users and, and their interests. So if you're building an app, if you're building a product, if you're building um, anything that requires greater distribution, there's a built-in um, nature of Twitter where there's all these conversations happening and you're plugging into that. So, if you like movies and you like television, right, there's a conversation happening around the Oscars and the selfie that took down Twitter, but just had a tremendous amount of popularity and a tremendous amount of distribution. Uh, if you like science, uh, NASA has an amazing Twitter handle where they share photos that are literally breaking to the world or to human eyes and are breaking on Twitter that just get a ton of distribution because it's great content again and a great distribution, a great channel for spreading your word out. Uh, LeBron James, a little timely, but he had this tweet which was, I'm not MJ or I'm LJ, and now he's uh, LeBron. Uh, 37,000 favorites, um, you know, 100,000 basically engagements and counting, but this is his own voice and him interacting with his fans, and if you're a fan or if you're even a hater, you'll follow LeBron James to see what he's saying, to see what that conversation is about. Uh, and if you are into finance and you like, uh, you want the best, new, hottest tips on, on how to trade, how to invest, this is Drake saying, hey, the first million is the hardest, you know, kind of being Drake. And then T. Boone Pickens, who's actually a billionaire, replying to him, you know, saying, actually, the first billion is a hell of a lot harder. <laughs> uh, and so this is a conversation. This is what actually happens on Twitter. Uh, and we're just, we're, we're, we're amazed to see how these conversations go, uh, where people step up, where people step down. And Drake said, you know, T. Boone Pickens, you just stunted on me heavy. So uh, these things are happening. These are the conversations that are happening on Twitter. And, uh, you know, by building apps, by building publications, by reaching out to these people, you're plugging into these conversations and these groups, these interests that already exist. Lastly, here at Twitter, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is being open and real time. You know, um, we, we feel that it's essential that everyone's voice get heard, everyone um, gets distribution, and the greatest, the best content is the one that you know, people share, uh, and that it is absolutely real time. Right? It is the, the, the platform of now, the platform of what's happening, both from developers and both from users. You get to see uh, how news are unfolding as they unfold and as they get distributed. One of the visualizations that we have around our office, if you're ever around the, the office, feel free to hit me a message and I'm happy to have you over. We, we visualize, using Vine, at least in this case, we have these large screens where we actually show tweets happening in real time around the world. Uh, so there's Asia, there's America, um, and it's just, it's, it's humbling to be there and just to see these conversations happening um, and thinking, you know, what can we do to help get people's voices distributed and spread. In line with that, we've had other companies do visualizations or analysis of conversations that are happening on Twitter. Um, because they're open, because you can see who's following who, because you can see the interconnectedness of people, uh, they did a, uh, this company, Electionista, did a map of the various countries um, in the Middle East and how they were connected both in terms of conversations as well as followers. And so here in the top left, you'll see Lebanon, Jordan, Qatar, Kuwait. Um, the circles are actually the influencers, the key people who speak, and the lines are actually how they're having conversations or how they're being followed. 
Uh, and so there's this whole conversation that's happening um, with anything that's happening, whether it's startups or politics or so forth, um, and Twitter, Twitter's mapping those things. Maybe we're not ourselves mapping them, but there's certainly other companies who are looking at that information and seeing how these conversations are unfolding and how these influencers are happening to shape events. So people ask, why build in Twitter? Um, we feel that the, the key things are just distribution at real-time global scale, connecting users to their interests, regardless of whether or not you're promoting your local shop or your ESPN trying to get content distributed. And the fact that it's open in real time, we feel is an advantage for, um, for both transparency, but for, for making sure that your voice is heard and you're getting the latest information at any given point. So hopefully those are some interesting reasons that you might want to, uh, to build into Twitter. And then the question is, well, how do I build into Twitter? And so we'll share some examples. Um, but before that, we have some cards out in the back that we're willing to share. Um, we have streaming APIs, which you can basically, if you're a developer, latch onto and get tons and tons and tons of tweets streamed at you and do whatever you want with them. We have the REST APIs, so you can do more transactional things, like we had that path example, click a button, post a, uh, post a photo, post a comment to Twitter. Um, we have Twitter cards. So at the very beginning of the presentation, we showed the videos of the NFL showing video clips on Twitter, and Twitter cards enable that distribution uh, for Twitter's platform. We do a bunch of stuff in open source, which some people are familiar with. Has anybody here used Twitter Bootstrap? Show of hands. Do you guys like it? It's OK? It's cool? Yeah? Cool. I'm a hack, so I, you know, when someone can make something that's visually beautiful or good enough that I can run with, um, I love it. Um, but we have a bunch of other open source libraries that you guys should also check out. We have Mesos, things that help scale that we have um, open sourced and other Fortune 500 companies are actually using. Um, and you can just go to t.co slash apps or apps.twitter.com to get started to create your first app. You'll get auth tokens and so forth, uh, and you'll be able to plug right into Twitter. Um, to give a little background of what you'll expect when you plug into Twitter, this is one of the first tweets. Jack Dorsey, our, our founder, uh, sent out this simple message just setting up my Twitter. 140 characters. People look at this and they say, hmm, that's interesting, kind of, sort of. What can I do with that? Um, we think any individual tweet certainly has a lot of reach if it's an amazing tweet or if it's amazing content or if it's someone's voice. Um, but it actually is 140 characters with four kilobytes of information. And so when you're looking at this tweet, you may just see text. What you actually have is location, associations, who you're tweeting to, who reply responses, popularity, tweets, retweets. Uh, and so there's a whole set of information, four kilobytes at scale, at 550 million a day. Um, certainly a ton of data to work with. Um, it may not be the most, um, it may not be the precise information that a lot of people use, but when you start adding um, language processing, analytics on those kinds of things, you can start getting sentiment. You can start seeing how people are feeling about things, what they're watching, what they're not watching. Um, you know, you can get a pretty good sense of what's going on actually in the world. The first time I heard that working at Twitter, I was like, come on, really? Um, but we actually have one of the largest corpuses of human thought with 550 million tweets. I believe they say it'll take like 13 years to read, um, just, you know, if it were a book. So there's a ton of information, there's a ton of people expressing amazing things on Twitter. You can get that individually through our REST APIs, transactional, or you can get the stream. And so if you were to take those tweets and just put them back to back to back to back to back, that's what you get. And that's just a little piece of it. So building into Twitter is actually as simple as um, doing a post to, this is our filter API. You might specify on the URL parameters who I follow, what you're tracking, open webcam, and you can even specify locations, and you can get a stream that's specific to that area or to that filter. Uh, you can get a stream that is the sample stream, which is 1% of the fire hose. Um, a lot of people come and they say, hey, I want all the tweets. I want everything. Just give me it all. Uh, at 550 million in a day, I promise you, you do not want all of them. Um, I've tried, even with the 1%, and it's a lot to take in, and there's a lot of data. Um, start using that, start playing around with that, start collecting that data and doing analysis on that. As your need grows, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to like work with you. Um, but trust me, 1% of 550 is plenty. And it is statistically relevant. Again, there's like a good enough sample set where you're looking at um, 
a good chunk of data with what people are saying. And then we also have the, all the firehose, which we mentioned. And so just as an example, uh, again, there were some amazing talks already that, that I'm not going to one-up by any means. Um, but just to get an, an idea of how easy it is to build into Twitter, we have, uh, to get started, we have GitHub account at Twitter Dev. So you just go to github.com, Twitter Dev. We have a number of, um, we have a number of code bases, but the one that uh, is pretty popular or that we, we kind of like is the, a Ruby example that we have uses the firehose or the sample stream. So you just go here, you click on here, you know, you guys just do a, a git clone, you can get everything you need. Yep, you get everything you need. Um, as we mentioned before, you create an application. So you go to apps.twitter.com, you create application details, description. In doing so, you'll get your auth tokens, you'll get your whatever you need to connect to Twitter. And with just a little bit of code in this particular example, Right here you would put your tokens, uh, which is just a simple YAML file. Um, I can't, where is it right here? There are actually two examples, so I have a bit of a messy playbook here. We've done the pretty simple example, a guy named Andrew who's just hooked this up with WebSockets. Um, you can take a look at the, 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 the code that we have here. It listens to WebSockets, it listens to just all these tweets coming through. It handles them. We've integrated it with Google Maps. It's almost like the first thing that people do, and we're just trying to make it super simple to be the first, to help you do the first thing that people do. And you get a fairly simple streaming example, right? And this one shows the tweets happening on the left-hand side. It shows them being located uh, all over. And then as you change the location, it'll actually change the filter and um, you know, just show the tweets in that area. So you're getting that stream based on just a certain area. Uh, it's pretty amazing when you start looking at it, you start diving in, you're like, these are actual people in these actual places actually talking about things right now. Um, sounds, a little, sounds a little weird, but as you zoom out, uh, again, you just start seeing the scale at which you're operating. Um, and this is actually throttled a bit as well because uh, it's a pretty simple example. Um, you can actually go to twitterdevdemo.com uh, slash maps, that's where it's hosted. We just have some of these examples out there. But you get a scale of like, yes, this could actually be um, the body of thought of people in an area or potentially even the world if you were to be so, so bold. Um, and we're happy that Monica and Sophia and Rachel and Penny and everyone is talking about uh, and using Twitter. So that's one example. And then, not to jump around too much, but just to show a couple of other examples that we particularly love with brands and with you know, our own code. Here's an example of a company called Bluefin that was actually acquired by Twitter because of the amazing things that they were doing um, with Twitter data at scale. There's a talk track, you probably can't hear it. I might have to just mute it. Great. So we all know that you know, Twitter and sports, they, they go pretty well together. Um, here is the Super Bowl. And this is a visualization of all the tweets happening during the Super Bowl, time indexed. And so this is the conversation, 13.4 million people talking about the Super Bowl on Twitter. And Bluefin went actually and time sequenced important events in the Super Bowl, including the halftime. And you can see that little piece about commercials and saw who was talking about which commercials, what were the most popular plays, uh, and what was going on, right? So they've overlaid all this information, but the key thing being that if you have the conversation that's happening real time about a TV event, and more specifically about commercials, uh, you can imagine that um, broadcasters who, you know, who's watching? I'm not too sure. Well, again, a statistically relevant sample of the population is on Twitter, and so when that conversation is happening, we can reliably say, this percentage of the US or even the world is watching this show at this time as it's happening. Um, so those are the kinds of things that Bluefin has been doing and you can imagine uh, there are other companies that are taking this to different verticals or different use cases. So we're super excited about uh, you know, the possibilities that you can do with the data uh, and the creativity that could be you know, unleashed, if you will. Um, there's also this thing that Starbucks does called Tweet of Coffee. Has anybody heard of this at all? One person. So thank you. 
Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. You can go onto Twitter, and this is me doing it. You just say at tweet a coffee to uh, Brian Bloom was the person I did it back then, but this was my willing uh, participant. Uh, thanks for having me at Info Berkeley was the event, and then down below, who replies? Starbucks does, and Starbucks says, hey, uh, Brian, uh, Ryan just tweeted you a coffee. Click on this link, and literally, when you click on the link and you do a quick OAuth, you have $5 in your account. Did it work, I hope? I, I think it would have. It would. The permissions that they asked for on the app is pretty much everything in the world. Like, oh, for the Starbucks app? Yeah, I can tweet in my name. They can change my profile and read all my tweets. OK, I'll talk to them about that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. If anybody else wants a coffee, I am happy to meet you out back and give you a coffee if you want to give all your information to Starbucks. Um, <laughs> they're buying your information. They're buying the information. Um, they actually don't do a ton with that information. They actually just see this as just a very natural marketing use case. Um, and and to, to effectively have the conversation, have Starbucks be the conversation in a very natural way. Um, one of the things that we do in developer advocacy is we try to show or we try to help, develop, we try to help developers and brands bring their voice to Twitter in a way that makes real sense on Twitter. And so certainly you could take uh, content and you could broadcast it and you can have the ads which do work and do have click through. But this was something that was very natural on Twitter and just kept the conversation going in an evergreen conversation. It launched more than a year ago when people are still doing it and you know, ES Starbucks has this continual conversation about their brand out there. Great marketing but it actually you know, drives revenue. So. Feel free to use it sometime uh, with maybe a friend who, who, who loves Starbucks and already has the, the app installed and uh, give it a shot. Uh, so I asked you guys to also um, to tweet at me a song. We'll figure out what songs you tweeted at me right now. I'm crossing my fingers. Let me see here. And so, let me see here. The next episode by Dr. Dre. Done by, <laughs> maybe not that one. We'll do this one. Welcome to the Jungle, De La Soul, I Know. Um, so effectively what this is doing is this is, so effectively what this is doing is this is, this is, this is just a quick integration that we did because we got invited to the, the um, the Spotify hackathon, and so we put this together really quickly. Um, it was actually a, a music hackathon in San Francisco. It wasn't just the Spotify hackathon, um, and we were able to work with a lot of the, the the music companies there. Beats was one of them. They wanted to launch this new web-based audio player, and so uh, and so we did really quick integration where you log in via Twitter, you log in via Beats, and um, you let people just tweet you and it creates a playlist. And so the thinking was that this actually was playing in the background because we launched it before the, uh, before the hackathon itself to let people have music going on in the background. Um, I've also used this for a couple of barbecues and whatnot with friends. And, and, and we're just trying to show that like, there are a lot of interesting things that you can do on Twitter um, and give people both ideas as well as sample code. I'm happy to show you where this is. Uh, it's under my own personal GitHub account. Um, but Super simple to do, took a couple days to, to put it together, uh, and an interesting use case of Twitter as a communication channel. And let's see. Other crazy things that, that our team kind of goes out there and does and, and we think are cool uh, with devices. So this is one of our developer advocates, one of my peers, Romain Hewitt in the UK. Uh, he is fascinated with drones, and so I wish I could give this talk. This would be amazing. But he takes a drone, he sets it on a table, he tweets at it, and it flies. Uh, he's taken Raspberry Pi, kind of connected that together, and um, I've seen it once, and I was just like, whoa, bow down. Just amazing. And then he runs into the crowd, and he takes a picture of himself by tweeting, you know, take a picture, takes a snap, and then posts it to Twitter. So bravo, Romain, I wish I could show you. Um, but these are all things that you could do with the API. They're actually on our GitHub account. Uh, he's got the, it's called NodeCopter. He's got the libraries for flying the node with the APIs for the Twitter, um, and I think even the Raspberry Pi stuff. So uh, if anyone is interested, I'm happy to show you or learn, sit down and learn with you and figure out how we could go build this together. 
Um, so hopefully I've given examples of, uh, of you know, kind of what the Twitter API is able to do, maybe even inspired you a little bit of you know, why you'd use the API for distribution, uh, for bringing great content, or for tapping into the conversations that are already having on Twitter. And there's a bunch of code out there to just get started. Um, I'm here to help. Twitter dev, our entire developer advocacy team is here to help. You can Google uh, Twitter API libraries and learn a lot, a lot of things. Again, we have cards out there in the back. Um, and just feel free to tweet me, at rchoi. Uh, I'm happy to chat with anybody and get you started and you know, see how I can help. And uh, that's the talk. Questions, yes. Oh. <laughs> No charge for the 1% fee? Correct. So the question is, is there a charge for the 1% fee? There is no charge. You can just get started. Um, as it scales up, because it is something of a cost, getting the full feed uh, does have, if not a charge, at least some kind of, uh, rest not restrictions, but there's uh, some terms around it. Um, but again, that 1%, you can get started. You can download that Ruby uh, example and you know, get going immediately. Other questions? How do we? Oh, great, great question. So um, we have a bunch, uh, a number of ways that we make revenue. There's uh, um, brands, brands use Twitter as a distribution channel. So when they have a tweet out there, when they have content and they want to broadcast that more widely, you can actually promote a tweet. You can even target tweets to your target audience. So say that just as an example, if NFL um, wanted to make sure that that video reached more people, they could promote it, they could target it, age demographics. Um, location and, and you know get it in front of the right audience. We also have the ability to um, to to get a lead generation, if you will, and so you can actually take uh, you can actually have a card that um, can gauge interest for maybe a flyer or for news or for information, and then share your email address all in the open where it says you know you are doing this, and then the brand you know collects the email address for distribution list and so forth. Um, and um, and there's just there's a number of products like that. Yes, and 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 we, we encourage people to start using it in kind of the organic sense and kind of understand what message resonates with your your audience and where you want to be. Um, and to just get started, it doesn't cost anything at all. You know, create a Twitter account, go on, um, follow brands and accounts that you like, and people build relationships. I've met a ton of people. Um, on Twitter before meeting them in real life. Uh, and, and it's not a substitute for anything. You, you go out there and you're on this platform and you make connections with people uh, and that, you know, that leads into things with Drake and T. Boone Pickens going back and forth on Twitter very organically. Other questions? Yes? I'm curious what you're That's a good question. So the question is uh, what initiatives do we have to get more distribution or to get more awareness um, to the broader population? Uh, have you seen some of the stuff that we might have been doing in the World Cup? at all recently? I did, yeah. Cool. So we, uh, for the World Cup specifically, we had a new user flow whereby um, if you are interested in the World Cup, it will, number one, um, get you to sign up and then immediately ask you, okay, you're interested in the World Cup? Yes. What is your team? And by knowing your team, we then uh, suggest players and teams uh, that are relevant to that area. And so you can see our, our, our I wouldn't say focus, but one of the things we, we're doing is saying around events, around um, around events, or around things that are more topical, bringing people into a new user experience where you have the context uh, and you're brought in immediately, following people to understand what the conversations look like. Yeah, and so the conversation is: what is the relationship between Twitter and TV, and how is that? How is that? Is that an initiative that Twitter is doing, or that we're bringing in with TV? Um, we work with a lot of publishers, a lot of broadcasters, and I think part is serendipity and part is, um, you know, how can we partner together to, to if you're a broadcaster, they want to make sure that the conversation is continuing. They want to make sure that they're getting distribution, so they come to us and they say, hey, what things can we do? Uh, and we love to be a part of the conversation for many different verticals, and so TV would just being one of them. So I'd say it's more of a, you know, coming to the table and saying, hey, what awesome things can we do together, more than us pushing it or them pushing it. Right. It really comes down to if people are tweeting about it, if people are talking about television shows, Game of Thrones, the Super Bowl, World Cup, um, you know, we want we we want to be that that channel for that real time conversation. And uh, whoever it makes sense to partner with, um, or whoever comes to us, um, we're happy to work with them. Another question back there.
what happens to them? So we have, uh, we have algorithms in the back. So the question is, um, if you have um, uh, shady accounts following you or spamming you or sending you messages, what happens to them? So we actually have a, um, pretty aggressive algorithms that uh, look, at, look at those accounts, figure out which ones are getting a high level of what we call abuse, and they actually get banned or they get disabled. Um, it's, it is a matter, uh, you know, I can't talk about the details because I don't really know the details of how those algorithms work, um, but I have seen them, the spam team work pretty fast. In some occasions, even be a little too aggressive. Um, we're happy to have a conversation with them and say, hey, that was not spam or whatnot. Uh, and they're very reasonable. They're trying to make sure that um, everyone who has a voice can be on Twitter, um, but robots that are going out there and trying to you know, link jack or things like that are, are you know, contained. Um, is that interesting? Well, thank you so much. We'll, I'll be in the back if you have any other questions, or if you want to get started, feel free to shoot me a message at, at Archoy. Thanks again.